My name is Charlotte and I and my son Adam are survivors of the maternity scandal at the Shrewsbury and Telford hospitals in Shropshire. This is often referred to as SATH for short. Today there's a lot of news coverage about the next scandal at the Nottingham hospitals, which as reports go, is set to now be the largest in NHS history. It's an unenviable title that those of us involved in the SATH scandal used to hold. So on the basis of being a survivor who together with hundreds of other families had to fight for years to get anywhere near the truth, Today, I'd like to offer a few suggestions for the Nottingham families who are now caught up in the latest maternity scandal. First, this might seem obvious to say, but fight, 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 fight. And even when you're utterly exhausted and feel like you're getting nowhere, keep on fighting. The Sath families were fighting for around 20 years to get to the truth. All the way back in 2002, some of our families were featured in various national media outlets, telling our stories and explaining how SAF had caused horrific harm and death to our babies during what should have been the most beautiful time of a parent's life. This kept hitting the news time and time again, but for years, nothing changed. Over the years, there were inquests and court cases, all of which confirmed that babies were dying avoidably at the hands of these hospitals. Finally, through the incredibly determined and personally costly efforts of Kaylee Griffiths and Rhiannon Davies, the cases of 23 families were put before the then health minister, Jeremy Hunt, and my family was one of these 23 cases. Mr. Hunt ordered an inquiry into the maternity care at the Shrewsbury and Telford hospitals. And through this, Donna Ockenden, who many of you will know, is a highly qualified and experienced midwife, was brought in to start to investigate. Even after Donna started her inquiry, Sath regularly referred to our families as historic and legacy cases, as though what had happened to us was all in the past and the care was better now. Of course, we regularly shouted that this was not the case and thankfully, eventually they stopped doing this, but it took a very long time. Over the years that followed, those 23 families exploded into an eventual 1,486 families whose care was being investigated for all manner of errors. And while many mothers and babies were left with lifelong injuries that are both physical, emotional, and mental, Donna eventually concluded that 201 babies could have survived if they had received better care, and 29 babies had been left with avoidable brain injuries, and 69 had been left with avoidable cerebral palsy. In some cases, both baby and mother died during labor, and in other cases, mothers and or babies were left permanently disabled. For those who are interested, I'll do a separate video telling my own story. So for the Nottingham families, some of whom have already been campaigning for years and who have succeeded in having Donna Ockenden move on to investigate your stories, keep fighting. No matter what knockbacks you may yet receive, please don't give up. It's because of the families who campaigned here in Shropshire that we finally got to the truth. Your truth also needs to be heard. Second, be really clear about what you want from this inquiry. There's a lot of media coverage today indicating that families are seeking an acknowledgement of the truth of what happened to them and an apology from the hospital. This is incredibly important, but it's only just the beginning. Speaking as a survivor, this process of enduring the inquiry will open an awful lot of wounds. You will almost certainly revisit a lot of pain and trauma and memories that frankly you'd probably prefer to be able to forget. 
During our inquiry, Donna worked really hard to get psychological support and therapy made available to the Saath families, but it took her a long time and it didn't start until I think about 2020, bearing in mind that the inquiry had started all the way back in 2016 and some of our families had been harmed up to 20 years before that. This support was available to all families throughout the rest of the inquiry and for a few months after the inquiry ended. But then the psychological support was wound up because the inquiry had finished. Many families still have a lot of grief and trauma and still experience questions about what happened to them. But now there is nowhere to turn. Because as is ever the case, the waiting lists for access to NHS counselling are incredibly long. And most of us can't afford to pay for private therapists. So I hope that therapy will be provided to the Nottingham families, even as it was provided to us. But please make the case that it needs to remain available to you even after your inquiry ends. This might need to be through different funding channels. I don't know how it would work, but please be clear that many of you will need it. Third, try to be very clear about what you're hoping will come out of the review into your care. For us at SAF, the inquiry started with very small numbers and then it just ballooned. After a couple of years, Donna released an interim report midway through her inquiry, and then at the end of it, in March 2022, she released a major report into failings at the Shrewsbury and Telford hospitals and a wide variety of what she described as immediate and essential actions that maternity units nationwide needed to adopt to improve maternity care for other families. For the families, there were various times during this process when we were invited to listen to private webinars where Donna would update us with her progress. And just before the report was released, some of us were invited to a personal meeting with her for a preview of the conclusions that she'd come to where the report itself was then released to the media and nationwide the following day. It did take a number of months for her team to work through all of the cases because there were so many of us, but families were eventually offered individual meetings with Donna and at least one of her medical experts to discuss our individual cases. And we were given a brief report, usually a few sides of A4, on what had happened to us. Some of us were happy with this result because it gave us more information than we'd ever had previously, but some of us were not happy because it felt very brief, considering the depth of what we had endured, what we had shared with Donna and her team, and the answers that we were still seeking. So fourth, make sure that there will be a way that you can still ask questions about what happened to you and your families, even after this latest inquiry finishes. Many of us still have questions, even now, some of us disagree with the conclusions that the investigating team came to. Many of us have taken medical negligence cases through solicitors, but some of us have been left with unanswered questions and nowhere to turn because the inquiry is finished. So even as your inquiry is at an early stage, ask Donna and her team to make sure that there will be a method for you to keep asking questions for as long as you need to. Fifth, speaking to the media is hard. It's costly to keep explaining what happened to you, particularly to people you don't know and when there are also cameras involved. However kind and empathic the journalists are, it's a difficult thing to do. But despite this, I would encourage you wherever possible to be open to talking to these journalists, because in our experience, they advocated for us even when no one else was listening. Of course, every journalist is impartial and they're simply covering the news, that's a given. But over the years, they kept our story in the public eye. And because of this, they helped to drive the search for answers. So speak to the media. It's not about self-promotion. It's about finding the truth. Sixth, take care of yourselves. 
where possible, make contact with and friendships with other families who were involved in your review. Many of us have stayed in touch and continue to speak online or to meet up. This is because while each one of our stories are different, we all understand the pain and trauma that each other have endured. We stand in solidarity with one another and we support one another. There will unfortunately be some families whose pain and anger is so great that they become bitter or behave badly towards one another. This is really tough to cope with, but just try to remember that they're hurting. Last, but definitely not least, remember that you're not alone. Tragically, other families have endured this before you, and as much as I wish it wasn't the case, I'm sure others will also endure it in the future. We stand with you. We're thinking of you. We're following your stories, and we believe you. Fight on, because your truth deserves to be heard.